welcome to 10 Minutes with Chris. Today, we've got a guy who's been around quite a few years now. He's got a new book out. And we're delighted to have him here today. It's Tommy Byrne. Tom, welcome. Have a seat. Come on, come on. Have a seat. Tom, great to see you again. Great to see you again. You're looking very well. You've been well to I when's the last time we saw each other? Um, when I was in the UK before I came over to settle in France. How, how long ago was that? Well, it's, it's, it's only a few a few weeks ago that we just we had a conversation, but um, as you know I, I try to talk, get away every year to, yeah. to rest and to, to write and Still doing the charity work, Tom? Uh, I do a little, yes, I do a little. But, um, but my next show is going to be, some of the funds will be dedicated and given to the Red Cross. The Red Cross, which I'm really? a great supporter of. Look at me, Tom, not the camera. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, that's, that's great, Tom. So what we want to have a chat, you know, I've read the book, yes. spent last week with you, but what a fascinating tale you've got with austerity and the meandering through life really so i'm glad you enjoyed it why i think what the audience would like to know tom and all your millions of fans but why now tom why at 63 did you decide to write that book well many reasons really um i've been um, i've had a life as you say and i find that celebrity today is to me pretty meaningless in the sense that you'll get a 19 20 25 year old writing a biography um, I don't see the point of that. Uh, how can you have lived? Yes. How can you have exactly. had emotional depths of experiences of relationships, traumas? Okay, yes, you may have it in a small amount of few years because you're a recording artist and there's been all sorts of things about the music industry, but okay, what have they lived? What have they experienced? What have exactly. they shared? So what, have, what story have you really got to So, Tom, Tom, can we get now mm. into the book then? So, mm. the first thing that struck me really was to your relationship with your father mm. and the story there. And yes. The Second World War. Can you tell us about that period? Being taken with prisoner. Well, yes, of course, at the time I knew very little about it. Uh, and it was only in the later years that I really started to develop a relationship with him that was significant because I always saw him as an austere man. I did When you're a child and you're growing up, you don't really know and understand who your parents are. Yeah. And of course, there were pretty austere times. And um, so you have a totally different image and thought about your parents when you're young. And then you learn to understand them as you're getting older. And when I discovered about, I always knew that he'd been a prisoner of war, but when I discovered more evidence and more facts about the traumas that had been into, I really wanted to try and get them down. But of course by then, his, although he'd got a grasp, his memory was good, he couldn't fill in the detail and I was fascinated to get some of and it did down. That, did that help you understand yes. him yes, better absolutely. from your early It helped years. me forgive him for what forgive I thought, him. If you forgive him for what I thought was his distance and his is austerity and but then I understand it now and can can uh, absorb it yes. and, and, and realize so, so the book did that for you it, as well it helped, quite cathartic it helped, really. it helped yes it, helped. it did help okay so let's get on now to your fantastic acting career and all the stars that um, well, you've, Mike, you've worked with over the years and I know you've worked with uh, Dickie Burton what, what was Dickie like well he did have a big one and that's why Liz was constantly wanting to marry him, you know, yes. because, I mean, I think the problem with Dick was his dick. Yes. And uh, with Liz, I mean, she did um, fall in love very easily. She was a, she was an English woman, did, as did you, you know. Did you know Liz Patel as oh, well? Oh, yes. Well, I knew her at the time where she developed a lot of problems, mainly known as fat. Yes. And uh, she was on the boulevard in Los Angeles once, and uh, the, she was, you know, on the corner, and the police stopped and yes. moved her on because okay. people were trying to board her. Yes. They thought she was a bus, yes. but she was very big. And of course, she used to have to go to Woolworths to buy stretch jewellery. But it was at that time when she was having the weight problem that I really yes. knew her well. So Tom, but, but we were friends. We okay. liked each other. So, Tom, everybody comes on my show and always yes. says how beautiful, or wonderful, or great to work with all these stars. I mean, you've worked with the best of them yes. across the industry. What, yes. what, what I'd like to know, Tom, and I think some of my, my audience... Who was the worst person you've ever worked with, Tom? 
Oh, well, I can't say the word. I mean, Monroe, could, was, Monroe well, could be difficult. She um, was difficult. Monroe, oh, yeah, because she Norma did, Jean, did you know as uh, Norma? Yeah, but she never turned up. We hardly ever saw her. The poor bitch was either lying in a trailer yes. on antidepressants or stimulants, you know, or being poked by some politician. But not a very nice person either. Tom. No, I wouldn't say she was a ni <laughs> not a nice person. I think she was a, a, a good person. But when you've got a job to do, you've got to be considerate to other people and that woman cost a fortune of not turning up what but I liked her OK, what about leading men, Tom? And you've worked with Monty, oh, I've had, Monty Cliff, I've had most of Dirk Bocart um, well, who, Dirk, who, Dirk who, was, was, who was the guy where you thought bloody hell, he's hard work he's a nasty Dirk Bogard Dirky. was not easy Dirk. No, he was charm itself, but he was one of the biggest liars I ever met <gasps> gorgeous eyes though he oh, said beautiful eyes Yes, it's like football pieces. Well, he was a matinee idol, as you know. I mean, he did all these silly things in the 40s, 50s. So doctored up your bum and things like that. Did you live with Turkey? No, no, never. I wouldn't say. He wanted me to, but I said I couldn't. No, because, you see, he just wanted to share the expense. OK, well... He was a, he was a tight bit so as well. So you were, you were in Hollywood after yeah. the war, the early 50s. Yeah. You've seen it all, the studios. You've yeah. signed the contracts. Oh, my favourite was Gloria Swanson. I wasn't going to ask you your favourite, oh, actually. All right. I was just going to move to... A period where you signed that contract for mm. four years with MGM. Seven, actually. Seven years. I broke Seven it. Seven years. Yeah. We, you knocked out four or five, not children. Not <laughs> children, because at that time, Tom, <laughs> this is my question. At that time, you revealed to the world you were a bit of a bender. You mean I was a bum bandit? <laughs> so well, something like that. Sam. It was you and, there was problems with you and Rock the Cock Hud Hudson. Well, you uh, and, and they were getting... Because you're <coughs> still Macho. a very attractive man for... Uh, how old are you now? 1964 nearly. 64 nearly. I've not washed your dress. I've just come out to do this quickly so because I don't normally give talk interviews. Talk to me about when you thought, I'm going to tell the studio, I'm going to tell my fans well, they wouldn't. that I like a bit of... Well, they can't. Uphill they wouldn't... You see, the thing <laughs> is, I had all the pressure of the, the publicity department and the yes. uh, uh, not revealing it. And so they used to put me with women Yes. And send me out to restaurants and that and that because I'd be playing with the waiters, wouldn't I? Yes. And the thing is, the matter is yes. that I, I had to sit on it. Well, not literally, but I had to sit on the story for quite a few years. And it was only when I signed my first independent contract uh, when I broke away from Metro. But that, Tom, I want to get into the mind. Were you sort of traumatised? I mean, there, there you are, you guy. Well, You've won six Oscars, yeah. numerous Emmys. Millions of pounds. Are you thinking, if I tell them I like to sit on the cock of a bay, then I'm going to lose all that? It's all gone. It must have been a concern to you. you I mean, you're a talented man, but what that drag you through, you know? You're losing millions of women who adored you. Who'd been there through thick and thin with you, Tom. Through some pretty low moments with your yeah, drinking. Yeah, but they're not drugs. alone. No, I know that. But you must have been a bit concerned, thinking, look, if I come out and look, say, I am... A times, sausage jockey. This could really affect my career. The times everyone in Hollywood knew. Okay. We all knew who was. But your fans didn't, Tom. That's, that's well, what I'm trying to drive at. That's true. And I thought I was secure financially. Yeah. Um, I'd made some of the best films that have ever been made. Made. To be honest, Tom. And so. um, I've set through. When this. I remade um, Captain Lust and the Pirate Women. That's I right. love that. Well, I think my, my biggest one that I really... Not Deep Thruster. No, not, not that Deep Thruster. No, <laughs> that, that should have ended up on the cutting room floor. That was one of the worst pictures that Cecil that B. Was probably made. A, probably it, a, was there a low moment, I'm not Tom, going to talk about that. When you, you were accepting any kind of script that the I had to for the money. So it had affected you then when you came out as... No, this was before I came out. I was under a, a contract packet. and I couldn't... I couldn't break with these scripts. I was told I had to do these films. I was gotcha. under contract. Gotcha. And when I refused to do the last one, unless there were major rewrites, I said, I'm going to Fox. Okay. And so they loaned me to Fox, and I put my career back on track because I remade... Um, I remember it. Uh, I remade... I remade it was a Hitchcock film. No, it no, wasn't. It was, it, you tell me which film I remade. It was... Uh, if you know all about me. I do know all about you. It was... Um, wasn't it a, a Road to Victory? No, no. I remade... The, the Longest Day, was no, it? The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. No, I remade, like let me finish, okay. I remade The Lion in Winter, yes, and it was titled My Big Pussy is Frozen Solid. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. But the box office again, Tom. Smash! It was a smash. <laughs> it smashed records for the worst recorded receipts of any film. 
that Fox had put out. Well, they never told me that. <coughs> well, how do you, I mean, from Fox then. Are you saying I was on the crest of a slum? <laughs> yes. Well, from there, Tom, it was, there was a period, a dark period, five or six years, you were in Hollywood. I was in a sauna most of the time. <laughs> So it's a dark period, Tom, and, and the, the overdose that tried, tried to take your life up three times. Well, I was drinking heavily. It was for days. attention, Tom, really. No, That's it was. The, I was depressed. It says it in the book. I was depressed. It says it in the book. Well, I wanted attention. <laughs> I don't think I've it. ever said that. Where does it say that? Well, it's page 137. Well, let me see it. Read it to me. I've just been... By a donkey love over here, bellowed Mary. No, that's you've you've taken that completely out. Okay, okay. So now you're in your mid fifties. <laughs> all of a sudden, a great director, Scorsese comes, mm. grabs you by the balls and gets you back in the studio. How did that feel when you just wanted to be Tommy Bunn again? It, great script, Tom. Yeah. One of it, the greatest scripts ever. It was exciting, ever. and I didn't know if I'd be up for the challenge, to be honest. Mm. I didn't know if I could cut it. Yeah. Because these young kids now, you know, they, you know, you get these action movies. This was an intellectual movie, as you know. Yeah, it was. And it had got a bit of action in it, especially in the bedroom scenes. But the title, Tom, Dick Licker Dave, I mean, it, it's a bit <laughs> extreme, isn't it? And I thought, <laughs> Dick Licker Dave? I mean, you're really <laughs> narrowing down. Audience there of it. Well, it went on general release. <laughs> it did. It did. <laughs> I would like to say to everybody, don't be put off by the title. Well, they might, re they might rename it. We're two I mean, minutes over Dave. as well, here. This was ten minutes with Chris. It's been twelve minutes. What about Lawrence? You haven't okay, mentioned so when I redid Lawrence of Arabia, have you? Okay, so we've got that. Uh, Tommy, thanks for that. We'll talk again in a moment. But great to see you, Jumbo. ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tommy Byrne.